What marketing channels work best for indie developers and what channels are to be avoided? In this video, we share tips and insights how to do a successful campaign. For this, we went to see MoonEye, a studio based in Hamburg, known for their highly acclaimed game Lost Amber. Hi, we are Maggie and Dennis from Game City Hamburg, the local initiative to support and promote the games industry here in town. We visit local game studios to find out what their view on topics is that concern indie developer studios everywhere. We talk about strategies and channels with Tobias, he's CEO of MoonEye, a Hamburg-based studio best known for their highly acclaimed game Lost Amber. Let's see what Tobias had to say. MoonEye was founded in 2014 and is located in the Oberhafen district in Hamburg. In 2016, they won one of the most successful Kickstarter campaigns for video game from Germany ever and received more than 326,000 euros for the first title Lost Amber. Lost Amber turned into a long-term success for the studio and is nowadays available for PC and consoles. The game is loved by players worldwide for Moon Eyes trademark, narrative-driven and emotional games. After the successful launch of Lost Amber, the studio started Moon Eye Indies as a publishing label to support indie devs in promoting their own games. Heaven Park was the first game published by Moon Eye in 2021. Hi Tobias, thank you for having us here at Moon Eye. To start things off, we would like to know a little bit more about you as a person. So please tell us uh, what do you do at Moon Eye? I'm Tobias, uh, I'm yeah, CEO and programmer at Moon Eye and I pretty much started programming my first little games uh, when I was 15 years old or something, something like that. Uh, started studying programming and, and media systems, then continued to, to study programming and games in Hamburg, where I met my co-founders for MoonEye back in the day. The main game we developed is called Lost Ember. It's an exploration adventure where you play different animals in a kind of post-apocalyptic but still beautiful world that was released in 2019 for all major consoles and PC. At the moment we are working on something new that I can't talk too much about. But we also started to support other companies and other developers in um, publishing their games with our own little publishing label uh, that we called Moon Eye Indies. Already started uh, with my own company um, for the first actual job in the industry, uh, and that was seven years ago. How did you tackle uh, the marketing for the games you already marketed yourself? It basically was a trial and error thing in the end. My recommendation would definitely be just try and put out something with a very, very tiny budget on as many channels that you, uh, as you can, and then see if one of them really performs well, get a lot of, gets a lot of likes and comments or shares or whatever, and then later on focus on that. I think you cannot really tell just from, yeah, from the beginning, this channel is, our main, is gonna be our main channel. You have to try it basically. Do you have a tip how to identify the target group for a game which is in a very early development stage? Getting the target group right is very important, especially uh, at the beginning, uh, to, to decide where to focus your marketing. I guess you just start by, by uh, defining a target group early on in development for yourself uh, and your team and then try and reach those people. Uh, for Last Ember, we, we defined the target group at the very beginning and we knew at least who we thought we were developing for. And then we reached out to these kinds of people that matched our descriptions. So you basically have to measure how many likes on, on Twitter, Facebook or other social media platforms you get. Where are the people, where the community tells you they're coming from? Because when you're smaller on the Discord server, you can just ask the people, hey, where did you hear about us? At least some of them will tell you something that, that helps narrow it down where you make the most impact, basically. Yeah, it start, started with a very broad definition and then got narrowed down uh, throughout the development time when we just got some feedback. An important thing as well was just to show Lost Ember on, on different kinds of lot, uh, conventions where people can actually see the game and see early demos and early alpha footage of it. Yeah, there you can get a feeling of, of what kind of people um, is attracted most by, by your idea and your concept. Lost Ember is a very visual game, always was. Um, so the, the 
platforms that focused on enabling us to, to show videos and a lot of uh, yeah, visual content um, always worked best, like YouTube, Instagram. Facebook also worked really, really well. That is because um, the Lost Ember target audience is a bit older. We don't focus too much on like teenagers, but more on the student group. Quite recently, we also um, tried TikTok though, and that worked really, really well as well. And that is again, much younger. So uh, maybe we did focus on the wrong platforms before, but um, yeah, TikTok has been an amazing tool to reach completely new audiences uh, over the last couple of months that we've been uh, working with it. What would you say at what stage should indie devs allocate time for marketing? I think as early as you can. With Lost Ember we started basically right at the beginning with the first concept art that we put on Instagram and Twitter. Nothing much came from that for about two years, but uh, it still gave us this core community of some people that pushed us um, when we started the actual marketing a while later. Just having this core community of, of core fans uh, that then when you do the actual thing, get the stone rolling basically. That's um, also worth a lot. A lot of people are probably worried um, to, that their ideas are going to get stolen or something like that. But I don't think that's really a big concern uh, that you should have as, uh, as an indie dev most of the times at least. One of the things that didn't work was streamers and influencers as well. Uh, I think that highly depends on the kind of game that you that you uh, develop. We never really saw any kinds of peaks in, in sales, um, even when streamers with, with millions of followers played the game um, and we were all over the front page of Twitch. That never really converted to sales for Lost Ember. Um, but there are, of course, other games where it definitely does convert because for our Kickstarter, it did work really well. Just because back then we didn't uh, yeah, put the, the full game out, it was just a demo, just a short a teaser of the full game and then something that like a streamer or YouTuber can, can work really well. After the full release, uh, most streamers would just play the full game and then you had experienced it and then that was it. And then uh, maybe some people were convinced to buy it afterwards, but just as many people just already heard the story and didn't uh, buy it afterwards. Do you see advantages in marketing and PR when being an indie? As an indie dev with a low budget for marketing, uh, you basically do everything yourself. You yourself go to the conventions, you yourself answer the tweet replies and, and uh, DMs on whatever. Um, and there are a lot of players and, and people out there who really enjoy this close connection uh, to, to the developers and the short ways to get uh, feedback and get, get answers to their questions beyond just the normal, yeah, the game is going to cost this and be out on that. And that is something that you more or less only get from, from indie developers who uh, themselves answer these kinds of questions instead of relying on some kind of community person uh, that wasn't involved in the actual development. Out of a total budget for game, what would your take on how much of the total amount should be spent for marketing? Probably again depends on the project. Uh, I can only, only talk about uh, what we did for Lost Ember. I guess we probably spent about 20-25% of, of the full budget for marketing. Probably half of that uh, for actual like ads. Is it possible to compensate uh, the marketing budget with your own personal investment of time? Keep in mind that spending too much my, uh, time on it will just result in the game being developed two years longer because you only spend time on marketing. Uh, so there always is a, a drawback, of course. Just budgets like 50 euros spent, spent in uh, the right platform is already worth a lot and can be worth two weeks of time spent somewhere else. The most important thing, again, I would say is to split uh, your efforts into multiple platforms and test where your main focus should be. Any, any kind of budget you have, be it 100 euros or less, split it into three or five or whatever and just test the waters uh, before you commit to one platform that may fail completely. Thank you very much for watching the video. We hope you liked it. We hope you can take something away from this. And if you want to know more about the Indie Dev Insights, check out our channel and our website. And if you really enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel, leave us a like. If you have any further questions, shoot us a message. 
and see you next time.